Hey everyone, uh, video, this is video number 20 of the series, and uh, if you watched video 18 and 19, um, you will see that we're just using the exact same program. Video 18 was the math instructions. Video 19 was a JSR and a creating a subroutine. And if you look over here, we have our main routine and we have our subroutine. And all we did on our subroutine was uh, in our main routine, we took out the multiply and the divide that we had over here. Uh, this program that showed you the math functions had uh, an add, a subtract, a multiply, and divide. We created a subroutine called multiply divide. We moved our multiply and divide instructions into that subroutine. And we made a JSR that told the main program to jump to the subroutine. So for a real quick review, the program starts at rung zero. It executes rung zero, then rung one, then rung two, and then rung three, which is the JSR, which is telling it to jump to a subroutine. And the subroutine is the multiply divide subroutine. So the program will jump over to here at rung zero, execute rung zero, execute rung one. It will hit the end instruction right here in the subroutine. It will then jump back to the main program on the line below uh, right where it left. So it left on rung three. It will, in this case, end up at rung uh, the end rung. And once it ends, the program will jump back to the top and start over. We can tell that the main routine is running uh, because of this green line on each side of the program. We can also see that in the subroutine uh, because of the green line on the side. And the fact that we have a JSR, which is telling the main program to jump to the subroutine. So this video here that we're going to be talking, uh, what we're going to be talking about is adding a jump and a label. That way we're able to jump around in our program or jump past pieces of information that we do not want to uh, read, but we don't want to get rid of. Uh, there are other ways to use it. You'll kind of have to decide how you want to use it. Uh, remember, my videos are always how it functions, not necessarily how you are going to use it. You're going to have to make that determination on your own. So again, we're going to be talking about a jump and a label. You can see them right up here. Uh, we need to put in some logic. So I'm going to go offline again. And I am going to add a rung. There we go. Uh, and I'm putting it right below our JSR so that uh, when we um, jump to our subroutine, we come back, we have another line of logic uh, right below it that we are going to execute. And we'll see that execute. Now, I've made up tags. There's a, a video, I believe it's video number two, that explains how to create tags. And I have already um, created those tags. And I made a tag here called a uh, multiply input. And I made one called multiply output or multiply uh, light. That's what it is. All right. So after it returns from the JSR, it will then uh, execute line four if it is on. So let me go ahead and download that. Uh, 
So again, after it comes back from the JSR, the jump to subroutine, uh, it left on line three, it will come back on line four. If there's any information in line four that needs to be executed, it will take care of that. All right. So in this case, it's sitting here looping and it's very fast. We can't actually see it working. But let, um, if I were to enable or toggle this uh, multiply input, you'll see the multiply light comes on. And if I turn it off, you see that it goes off. Um, but we'll run through the whole program real quick. So if I toggle my start, we're going to move a 100 into the math source. If I toggle my add, uh, it is going to add 50 to the 100. Same with the start uh, subtraction. If I programmed, uh, toggled the sub button, then the sub uh, instruction would work. Then the JSR would take us to the multiply divide subroutine. And if for some reason this toggled, turned it on, you'll see that that one worked. It will then look at rung one, hit the end line, and jump back to the main routine. And again, this is going so fast that we cannot see it. When it returns to the main routine, Again, it's going to return to the line directly below where it was when it left. It left on three. It will return at the start of four. And if we toggle this, we'll see the output come on. So what if we decided we did not want to see this happening, but we really don't want to get rid of the program, or we want to jump past it to some other type of programming? Uh, real simple. I'm going to go offline. We're going to add an input that is called a jump. Now, again, a couple ways you can do it. Uh, you can go right up here to program control. You can grab the jump and you can put it in. You could also just click right here and begin typing JMP. You will see it show up right up here. When you get JMP in, you hit enter, and it will just populate right over here. Right. Once we have the jump in, we have to give this a name. And I'm going to call this one. Let's see how many I got here. All right. I am going to call this one. Rung six. Rung six. And to me, that makes sense. Uh, it's just letting you know that this jump is going to jump to rung six. Uh, you can really call this anything that you want. And you'll see here, we do not have a rung six. So I'm going to have to add a rung. And once I add this rung... Uh, in order for this jump to work, I need to tell it where it is going to jump to. And we do that with a thing that is called an LDL or a label. And once I put that in there, um, when I click on the question mark or the operand information, you'll see that rung six is the only choice that I have because that's the only jump that I have in my program. And I will go ahead and put that in there. And our line is still red. Our rung is still red. The reason that that is still red is because we do not have an output. Remember, every line must have some form of an output, whether it be an output, an OTE, or some type of an instruction. And in this case, I'm just going to put an OTE in there. And I am... Uh, going to use a tag that I previously created. This is JMP complete. All right. Now, when I download this, uh, you're going to see that the JMP complete uh, stays green. All right. 
The reason for that is because this program is cycling so fast that we cannot see it. And it is actually doing the jump from jump rung six to label rung six. And it is executing the output that is associated uh, on the same one as the label. So this is actually just on here working. It's working so fast, we're not actually seeing it uh, shut off. Now, uh, if you remember before, when I turned on my multiply input, I got my multiply light. Uh, but since uh, we have this jump, we will not have that this time. So uh, if I were to toggle the start, you'll see that it actually did this move. If I toggle my add, you'll see that it did this the add instruction. Uh, if I toggle the sub button, you'll see that it did the sub instruction. Now it goes to rung number three. And in rung number three, it is a JSR, it's the multiply divide subroutine. So the program will jump uh, to rung zero of the multiply divide subroutine. And I will go ahead and uh, toggle this. You'll see that the multiply instruction work. I might as well do this one too. You'll see that the divide instruction worked. Um, doesn't matter whether these stay on or whether these go off. Uh, then it hits the end line. Once it hits the end line, it jumps back to the main routine on the line directly below where it was when it left. Uh, so it left on rung number three, it comes back on rung number four. And in rung number four, we have a jump to rung six. So it's actually jumping past rung number five and going directly to the label uh, that is associated with the jump uh, being labeled rung number six. And it is showing me that the jump is complete. Now, the way to prove that is I am going to go to my uh, multiply input. I am going to toggle it. And you'll see that the multiply input came on because I made it come on by toggling it. And since the logic is true in front of it, in any normal situation, the output uh, on the same line would come on. But we are not seeing that because I haven't made this come on. And the jump itself is actually jumping right past rung number five. It has no uh, opportunity to turn on that output because the program is jumping past it. Doesn't matter how many times I turn this on or off, that multiply uh, light output will never come on. And that is how a jump and a label are working. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment uh, and we'll try to answer those. If there are any type of an instruction that you're not sure about and you would like us to do a video on it, leave us a message for that as well. Uh, remember, our videos are made um, for our students and uh, we follow along with our course material to make it easier on the students to follow along with the videos and what we're doing in class. Uh, so we'll have to see how many of these we make. Uh, but if there is something specifically you would like us to look at and try to give you a good example of it, uh, we will definitely try to get that done. We always enjoy learning new things here and we will try to get that for you. Thanks again and stay tuned for more videos.